Hello all my fellow network engineers out there on the internet. Welcome to our vlog series, Demystifying Ansible for ACI, where we go over topics that involve using Ansible to get things done on your ACI fabric. My name is James Kaiser, and I will be your host for the duration of the series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about using loops in Ansible to push or configure large amounts of data to your APIC. Now, if you haven't watched part one or two of this series, you might want to stop this video and watch those first because I'm going to very quickly skim over some of the parts of this playbook that have already been explained in those videos. And so with that, let's kind of jump in and get this moving. First file we're going to talk about is our inventory file that we named host. Nothing's changed with this file. It's the same exact file we've been using in the first two videos. Second file we have up is looping.yaml. Looping.yaml is the name of this task that I'm that I'm calling this task uh, that we're going to use to push a bridge domain or a couple bridge domains. Host, any errors, nothing's changed. Var section, we removed most of the variables because, and you'll see why down below. Uh, we did add one variable called bridge domain and bridge domain is a list of dictionaries. Each line item is comprised of uh, a handful of key value pairs. As you can see here, we have ten, TN underscore name for tenant name. We're still using Lumos dash test. Our name is going to be BD101. We have BD102, and we also have BD103. These are going to be our bridge domains. We're going to call 101, 102, 103. And we can expand this as much as we want. But I think we're going to get the point with three. We don't have to do 100. Uh, for status key value pair, I'm replacing the value with another vari variable called the underscore status, which we talked about in the last video. Uh, and VRF is still JK VRF. VARS prompt, nothing's changed on the VAR prompt, and nothing's changed on our first couple of tasks where we use the when module to determine whether we're going to create or delete what we're trying to push in our JSON payload. And again, I talked about before, we're going to set a variable called the status. So that's how we jump back up here to the bridge domain. Uh, the status gets set for each one. Uh, when whatever we pick based based off of what we input. Now we're going to get down uh, here. I commented out the user generation YAML um, because I don't need to be generating a certificate and adding, deleting, and adding, deleting. We have the user up there. The certificate's up there. I'm just going to leave it. I commented out, so we'll skip that task altogether. Save us some time in our play. We're going to go right to the bridge domain because we already know the user is already working. We're already using um, key based uh, signature based authentication right here with our with our key and our cert. At the very bottom, you'll notice we have a loop and I'm calling the bridge domain variable that we set at the top. You'll also notice that in the JSON payload, the variable names have changed. Now they include item dot in front of what they were. So when you loop something with Ansible, you have to, if you want to call the key value pair, you have to call it as item dot with your key. Ansible by default sets item as the way to call up the key value pair. So you have to put item dot in front of your key in order to get its proper value inputted when using loops. Now, I'm going to push this. We're going to show, we're going to run this. We're going to show you how it loops through everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show another section called loop control on how we can change item to something else uh, because we might be trying to do a loop within a loop. And that's where loop control comes in. Okay, so here we go. We're going to run our play. Same command as before, Ansible dash playbook. We're going to do the dash I, to specify the inventory file that we call host. We called our playbook looping.yaml, and we're going to use the dash VVV option so we can see what's going on. When I hit enter, because I use the defaults, those variables will show up here, except for the password, didn't use defaults there. And we're going to create, which is default. And as we can see, we're going to run one, two, and three. Those were our three bridge domains. And on the right-hand side, you can see in the APIC, there they are, BD101, 102, and 103 associated with the proper VRF. So I'm going to scroll back in the buffer here. We're going to see what happened. Uh, same old play stuff goes on where we do the play setup, gather facts. Uh, we set the status to created modified because the default was for C. And we went down, we added the bridge domain. 
this is the bridge domain context stuff. So you see here's the JSON payload that we that we push BD101 created modified with our VRF. We push it to this APIC. Here's our path. Private key doesn't show protocol HTTPS, the username Lumos Ansible. So you could see that we are using certificate based authentication or signature based authentication. And then it does it again for BD 102. And again, same old stuff except BD 102. And then we do it again for BD 103. All the way down and the play is ended and we're done. Now I'm going to run this real quick again. Except this time, we're going to use the deleted option. I may have messed up the password. Nope, nope. And there go the bridge domains all gone. Okay, so we do just deleted all those bridge domains. The reason why I did this is I want to show you another, another little trick we could use with loops. It's called loop control. And what you would do is under loop, you do loop underscore control. And then we are going to configure the loop variable. And the loop variable we're going to call, let's call it BD for bridge domain. That sounds pretty good. BD for bridge domain. When you use loop control and you're specifying the loop variable, all of these items right here now need to become the loop variable. We're using BD. So these now become BD. I said BD, right? BD. I'm going to change them all. Just bear with me. Just to show you what I mean or to demonstrate what's actually happening and why we do this. So now I'm going to save this. When we go ahead and run, let me bring up the APIC. When we run it again and I use uh, to create it, it runs properly. Had they been items, I'll just set them back to item and save it. We'll run it again. It doesn't matter that they're still created. It's just going to fail. I just want to demonstrate why it would fail. I'll even try to delete them. Failed. Uh, Item is undefined, right? Because we specified loop variable to BD. Why would you do something like this? Let's say this, you, let's say you're already in a loop. I know in some of my playbooks, I'll use a with underscore file glob. Uh, what with underscore file glob does is let's say you have a folder of YAML files. Let's say there's a dozen YAML files in a folder and each YAML file has, I don't know, let's say five tasks in them. Doesn't matter. I would do a with file glob and reference the folder path. When Ansible kicks off, it's going to look in that folder. It's going to find all the YAML files and load them. This way, I don't have to call each one individually or specify individually which file to run. It says, look in the folder, run everything that's in there. If I wanted to add another 12 more YAML files in the folder, my play will just automatically pick them up and run them and execute them. I don't have to specify anything. So let's say this task right here, our ACI rest, adding a bridge domain, our ACI rest module was in a, is, was in one of those YAML files that was sitting in a folder that was called up with a with file glob. We would need to issue loop control somewhere on one of those loops, either the outside loop or the inside loop uh, to Pre uh, prevent the conflict of using the item. So that's why we use loop variable for loop control. We would set all of these wrong way to BD. Let me save it. I'll run it again. Again, we're going to try to delete our bridge domains that we just created. and it's fixed. And there go the bridge domains. And that's pretty much it for looping.
I try to keep this this video shorter than the last one. The last one ran a little too long, so I tried to keep this one short, quick, to the point. Uh, as you can see, you can easily take a list of dictionaries and expand that as much as you want to include anything you want. If you wanted to do EPGs, you can set just like you have here in the bridge domain. Call it EPG. Set up all your EPGs with all their names and all their information, all their key value pairs. It'll look exactly the same and then call it uh, ACI REST module with a task and loop it. It's that easy. So I hope this was informational. Be sure to check in next time with the next video and I'll see you then.